What's going on, everyone? So the Los Angeles Lakers need a center, right? That's a real focus, real target. I mean, there's even been reports that the Lakers are really kind of weighing their options at the center position, whether it's via the draft, you know, going and drafting, you know, Zach Eady, for example, or can you bring somebody in in free agency, you know, say a Valanchunas or an Andre Drummond, or there's the trade option and the trade route. And we're seeing a bunch of centers starting to potentially be available on the trade front. So definitely want to start diving into some of these. But this video, I want to talk about Walker Kessler specifically. Now, Kessler is a guy that I would love to have. Right? He's 22. He's young enough to, well, he'll be 23 this upcoming season, but he's young enough to essentially be drafted in this year's draft. He's as young as Zach Eady, right? So to me, it's like, Kessler's a guy that has shown the ability to, to play in the NBA, a guy that has shown that, like, hey, he may even have that, like, top-level talent, right? I'm not saying he's, you know, Jokic or Embiid or anything, but I'm talking about, like, being a legit, you know, maybe 15-8 and eight guy or 15-9 and nine guy that you could slot alongside Anthony Davis that I think could go a long way, right? He's a guy that can make some plays out of the post. He's not this, you know, he's not Jokic level, but he's a guy that has shown the ability to kind of make and pass out of the post. He's a guy that you can dump the ball down to and just absolutely go to work. He's a guy that can rebound and defend. You know, he's not this like all world elite defender, but he is a guy that, you know, can can be a deterrent at the rim. He's a real seven footer. Right? He's got some good size, some good weight behind him. Again, he's incredibly young and he's incredibly cheap. Right? He's only he's making under three million. Um, it's just like a hair under three million this year. So again, it, it the, picked up the club option. So he he's got this year. He's got another one next year. So as far as like just swapping, like going and acquiring him, again, like you could trade Christian Wood or whoever, right? Like that's not the problem. The financial side of things isn't a problem. It's what would it take to go get him, right? Danny Ains basically has everyone available. Right? And so that's just always what Danny Ains does, right? Like he'll listen, he'll explore things. It, you know, he has a clear direction that this is going to be a couple year rebuild that he's trying to basically stack and, and, you know, create, uh, collect as many uh, infinity stones as possible, right? As many assets and picks as possible to, to get ready for the future. So anybody that he can kind of, hey, this guy, you know, I like him, but, you know, he's not necessarily my long-term plan, right? I would love to keep him around, but he's not, like, detrimental. Like, let's unload him, right? So Walker Kessler, uh, Laurie Marketing could potentially even be on the move this offseason. Problem is, I know a lot of people really want Laurie Marketing. I would love to have Laurie Marketing. I just think, realistically, he's probably not going to be uh, obtainable from the Lakers. Like, it would probably take all of the Lakers' picks. And I like him, just not, I don't like him that much. Right? Like, I think he'd be huge for the Lakers, but I don't think Laurie Markkinen is worth basically five firsts, you know, with, you know, three firsts and then the two pick swaps that it'd probably take. I mean, they want like four firsts for Laurie Markkinen. To me, let somebody else go make that decision. I'd rather go go get DeJounte Murray for two or three picks, right? And you basically got him locked up and then go trade, you know, a pick or two and go get Walker Kessler, right? Like, if you told me we ended up with like DeJounte Murray and Walker Kessler and then... You know, whatever we signed a couple, took a flyer on a Kevin Porter Jr. and signed a, a Lonzo Ball off of a buyout, right? Or Chris Paul or somebody like that. Like I'd be all for that. Like let's go, right? And Walker Kessler is a guy that's young enough to where you could potentially have now grow and develop and be there for the long term. Um, you know, he definitely is somebody that has his flaws, right? Like there are concerns about like just. Teams putting him in various actions to essentially get him played off the floor doesn't really stretch the floor at all, right? He's not a guy that's going to really step out and knock down the three ball. Um, you know, he he can he's a good rebounder, good low post guy. This guy you can throw the ball down to, and he can kind of go to work and cook, right? He, he he can play a little bit of bully ball, but he's not like this super athlete that's you know Dwight Howard level, just blocking everything in sight, you know, gobbling up every board and just dominating folks again he's still 22 so there's still room for growth and development and maybe that potential to step out and knock down the three-point shot um i do think though if you're if i'm being honest i think that there is a argument to be made and a very good argument to like if you're gonna go and trade for walker kessler you might as well just draft zach Eady and keep zach Eady. like because again they're essentially the same age they're 
very similar, but Zach Eady is just bigger. And Zach Eady has shown the potential to maybe shoot the three ball. Um, again, we don't know for certain because we didn't really get to see that from him in the NBA. I know at the combine he looked good. Big difference from set shots in an open gym to it's go time, game time, and there's a ton of pressure, and now you got to start jacking up shots, right? That, that's very different. Um, so, But to me, I personally, if I'm being honest, I would rather, like if Zach Eady's on the table, I would probably rather go get Zach Eady and, and just stick with that and then you know let somebody else go trade for him, maybe go look to you know, get maybe a, a Colin Sexton or something. But also, I wouldn't hate, with Utah kind of expanding on the deal, like I mentioned to Colin Sexton, like, can you get Colin Sexton and, you know, Walker Kessler, you know, for, you know, Rui and Jalen hood Shafino plus, I don't know, two firsts or something, right? Or, you know, or, yeah, like two firsts or a first something where you got like a legit, you know, guy. I think Colin Sexton could get you, you know, because you got to take an account playing along LeBron, Anthony Davis. I also would like, personally, Colin Sexton coming off the bench, right? Like him being kind of the first guy off the bench, you know, but I think he could probably give you 15 to 20 on any given night off the bench, right? Just be kind of that, that pit bull that he is. I mean, he shot nearly 40% from three, if I'm remembering correctly off the my head. I know it's not, wasn't off. It was like 38 to 40% somewhere in that ballpark, shot nearly 50% from the field. This is a guy that can go get buckets, make plays, you know, rebounds pretty decent, right? Uh, to me, I think he'd be an excellent spark plug off the bench. Go get Walker Kessler in the deal as well. Um, and then can you still maybe go pull off DeJounte Murray, right? Because, I mean, especially if Rui, or if uh, uh, Reeves opts in, or not Reeves, um, D'Lo. <laughs> if D'Lo opts in, right, D'Lo could opt in, and you maybe go work something out, you know, maybe take him and Gabe Vincent and go go get DeJounte Murray and give up the rest of your picks. And now, you know, if you told me this offseason, the Lakers ended up with, like, you know, DeJounte Murray, Walker Kessler, and Colin Sexton, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Right, you got a young center for now and the future that can slot alongside Anthony Davis, that can back up Anthony Davis, however you want to approach it. You got your point guard for now and the future. You got another one that can come in, and play alongside because of his shooting ability. You play on ball, play off ball, right? Be that kind of six man. Like I don't hate the idea. Um, but you know, to me, like with Walker Kessler, it's just like, you know, he, he has shown those glimpses. He has shown those signs of like, oh no, he could be a real player. But can the Lakers develop him too, is the question. Like, Lakers aren't really, like, super notorious for developing guys and taking the time and patience to do so. Um, although the Lakers are trying, like, the idea with J.J. Redick and what they wanted to do with, like, a Dan Hurley was to kind of change the culture and build a program and a system, right? So maybe they'd be more willing to do that. Maybe they'd be more in that direction to, like, hey, let's let's – kind of take the time to really develop this guy. Let's take the time to really build this guy and make him maybe one of the premier centers in the league. I'm not saying he's going to be, you know, top 10 player or anything like that, but, you know, can he be a top 5 to 10 center? I'm talking about just centers. Can he be a top 5 to 10 center in the league in the next, you know, handful of years, right? You know, I mean, we'll see what happens. Like, Victor, if he plays at the 5, he's probably going to be the best center in the league outside of, like, Jokic. But even Victor might end up just being the best center in the league. Um, but talk about like centers, you know, cause again, Walker Kessler, he's a guy that's going to continue to need development, right? He could be a little foul happy, right? Not really, you know, still lacks discipline, which comes with the young guys comes with, you know, the, the 22, 23 year olds, right? Even saw with like Jackson Hayes, right? There, there were moments where Jackson Hayes looked great and brilliant. Right? I'm not saying I think Walker Kessler's better and I think he's further ahead. I think he'd make a lot of sense, but you know, Zach Eady, maybe that'd be a better example, Right. Like Zach Eady coming in, he's probably going to have a lot of those same issues, right? He's probably he's not the the lack of discipline, the you know staying putting on your feet, just kind of keeping your hands up rather than you know extending your hand out. Uh, like all of these little things are things like that you you learn and you develop and grow over the course of your career. So you know again, there's definitely some questions with Walker Kessler, but contract wise, wouldn't take you anything. Again, you could have JJ or uh, not JJ Reddick, uh, Cam Reddish. <laughs> uh, you could have Cam Reddish just opt in and trade him if you want to do right. Like, they're, like it's not like you could get there. Right? He's making three million, so the the contract isn't 
the difficult part. It's what would it take, right? Like, can you get him for like your 17th pick? Then sure, right? Like if you could take, or like say you throw in, you know, let's say Jalen Huchifino. Let they're like, hey, give us Jalen Huchifino and this year's first, and you can have Walker Kessler. Like, sure. Again, I'd probably prefer like if they have Zach, if Zach Eady's available, I'd probably just take Zach Eady, right? Like if I'm being honest, I you know keep Jalen Huchifino because you can either tack him on for another trade or continue to grow and develop him, um, and you know just go take Zach Eady, who I think probably gives you as much production this year out the gate. Um, but if you know, if like Zach Eady say isn't isn't on the board, say somebody takes him earlier, and it's kind of like, well, you know, we're not super high on any of these other centers. Well, then it's like, okay, well then sure, you know, go flip the seventeen, flip Jalen Huchifino or whomever, right? Go get Walker Kessler and your golden. Like, you know, I, I wouldn't hate that. You know, especially if the if the Jazz are like, hey, we we really like this guy at seventeen. We'll give you that. You know, I I don't know if I'd trade like the the twenty twenty ninth pick unless I'm getting other stuff, right? Because they could trade like the 2029th to 2031. You know, I might do like a pick swap. Like I wouldn't mind doing a pick swap. But I mean, again, Walker Kessler, there's still like you're still taking a gamble with him. Right? It's not he's not like some bona fide like locked like oh, he's the guy, right? Like this this is he's 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 clearly one of the best young centers in the league. Like you know, he he has he's shown glimpses of like this guy could be very good. But he's also had some moments where you're kind of like, oh, you know. So Anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of bringing in Walker Kessler? Do you think, no, stay away from Walker Kessler? Um, you might as well just, like I said, keep Zach Eady, something like that. Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. It's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell and notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.